My guest today is Brent Michael Phillips, who graduated at the top of his class at MIT and later left graduate school at MIT to become one of the pioneers and creators of the internet boom in the 1990s. However, he experienced a staggering physical challenge when his arm became immobile and frozen at the elbow after surgery. After a long battle of unsuccessful treatments, Brent experienced a miracle when his elbow instantly healed from energy healing. Today, he's an internationally known and best-selling author and speaker, and the media has called him the number one most powerful American healer and spiritual teacher. In today's episode, Brett and I talk about his new book, The Formula for Miracles, where science reveals the secrets of the spirit, part two. Brent's mission is simple, to share the world's most powerful consciousness technology to help people everywhere to improve their lives and end suffering. Welcome to Lifeology. Wow, this is great. Excited to be here. I am as well. Uh, my listeners may not remember this, but years ago, you were on my show when I just went on to radio. So now years later, we're back. We look younger than ever. <laughs> we're going to have a great show today. <laughs> Awesome. So you, uh, being a scientist, being at MIT, I mean, you've done all these different things. I remember reading more about your backstory. There were, uh, I think there were a lot of internet games or gaming that you worked on that was like your life. And you were just you know, put all of your energy and time into that. And you worked like 100 hours a week. And pretty soon your body's just going to handle that. Tell us what happened with that and what happened with your shoulder, et cetera. Well, long story short, I, I grew up as a pretty much a stereotypical nerd. I love <laughs> Star Trek, Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, the early video games, right? So I went to college and ended up at MIT, where I discovered the internet, which sounds funny today, especially for the younger listeners. But yeah, I know, right? <laughs> back in the 80s, no one had ever heard of the internet, right? Yeah, of course. And so I, I was like, wow, I'm like, this is incredible. So I made that the focus of my studies. I got my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I was actually working on my PhD as part of what was called the Telemedia Networks and Systems Groups. And basically, okay. we were sending video and audio over the internet. Oh, wow. Wow. That's back, back in the early 90s, back then, which was pretty that awesome. Is crazy. Yeah, that is awesome. And so when uh, the World Wide Web Consortium landed at MIT, I made all sorts of great connections in the web world. Mm, and I decided, well, I'm going to make my fortune. So I left MIT, moved to California, recruited my lifelong best friend, and we started a website company. Wow. And the very first website we got is we did the launch of the Sony PlayStation, summer of 1990. Oh, really? Oh, my that gosh. Was that's amazing. Project, right? Wow. It was pretty amazing. So things got off to a great start. After one year, I had 15 people working for me. That's we amazing. had five Fortune 500 clients, including Disneyland, Nissan Motors, and Sony are the ones you would have heard of, right? Mm -hmm. We even launched a second company to create an online game based on the technology I had created in graduate school. Wow. I'm like, hey, I can take all this audio video tech and use it to run a real-time online game. And so yeah. it was, in a sense, the first metaverse ever created, the first graphical metaverse. Wow. But the, the, there was a dirty little secret. One was the game was 10 years ahead of its time. Oh, gotcha. So it didn't yeah, do well commercially. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it created an entire new genre of today what we call mods. So oh, it was okay. groundbreaking both culturally and technologically, but it was so ahead of its time, it didn't make money, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other dirty little secret was the reason these companies were so successful is because I was there chained to my desk 80, 90, 100 oh, hours a week. Sure, sure. Because I wanted to be successful with these companies more than I'd wanted anything, right? Especially mm -hmm. the game company. That was my baby. I had worked on this technology at MIT for, what, four or five years? And then, you know, turned it into a game to release to the world. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh, right? Yeah. And so I was willing to do whatever it took to be successful. But my body had a different opinion. Sure. <laughs> my body couldn't handle it. And long story short, my body broke down. I started having really severe pain and injuries. And it got really difficult to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make a long story very short, I spent three years in conventional therapy. I didn't even better. I got worse. Oh, gosh, and wow. After three years, I finally got in to see the head doctor at Curling Joe. And so this was okay. a big deal, right? Yeah, three years. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this guy's going to know what to do, right? Yeah. He had, he had done surgeries on Magic Johnson and Oral Hershiser and like all these big stars I had grown yeah. up watching, right? All these big sports stars. And I'm like, wow, this guy's going to know what to do, right? And I was so excited. I was literally putting X's on the days on my calendar. It was like, I remember when I turned 16 and got my driver's license. It was <laughs> that kind of excitement. I just couldn't wait. Yeah. And I go in to see him 
and he's this kind of stately southern gentleman sitting, you know, he's got the the white beard and the big glasses, right? He's staring at my files and he just looks up and he goes, Well, I'm sorry, son, there's not nothing I or anyone can do for you. You're never gonna be out of pain and you'll never be able to go back to work. And I was just like, What? I didn't expect wow. that, right? Wow. I expected he'd be like, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, right? I yeah. figured he'd be the finished. head of the yeah, head of the yeah, head of that like yeah. hospital. Of course you think that. Yeah, well he was he was the head guy at the Curlin Joke Clinic, which is the top yeah. physical therapy clinic yeah, in the Western United States, mm-hmm. right? Huge, huge. And he said, last thing he said before I left, I was in his office for maybe a minute, right? He said, Son, is there someone that can take care of you till you die? And I was like, What? He's like I'm going to do you a favor, put you on lifetime disability now because you're never going to be able to work. You got someone that can take care of you. I'm like, I guess my mm-hmm. mom and He's like, well, good. And that was that. And on the way out, his secretary was like, oh, Mr. Phillips, just want you to know we've canceled all your appointments. Please don't ever come back. Oh my God. I was like, what? Right. Wow, so here okay. I was, 27 years old, living with really severe chronic pain. Mm-hmm. I, I can't work. Right. And I've been told there's no chance of recovery, that I'm going to be on disability until the day I yeah. die. It was crushing. And so I went to my business partner and lifelong best friend and told him what, what was going on. I figured he'd be like, hey, Brent, I got your back. We'll figure out a way yeah. to get through this together, right? That's the way it had always been. We, we were like brothers. We were so close that, that some people even thought we were gay lovers because we were that close. <laughs> That's when, I, when I was at MIT <laughs> for, what, seven years, we talked on the phone every single day. Mm, right, we were wow. that close every day, and and he was like, "Sorry, Brent, if you can't work, we have no use for you here." So he fired me from the two companies, sold the website company behind my back for millions of dollars, mm. and I found wow. out it was it was all because he had been secretly dating the woman I was in love with. Oh wow, there's a there's so a twist. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was in terrible pain was told I'd be on disability till the day I died. I had no money. I was living with my parents Mm. uh, and I had lost my lifelong best friend and the woman I was in love with. So that that's what they call the dark night of the soul. That is a dark night of the soul. (laughs) Yes. So long story short, I drank a lot, used drugs. I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I had a friend of mine turn me on to alternative medicine and that really made a difference. Mm -hmm. It didn't cure me, but it got me off the path of self-destruction. And I spent five years living on disability, running around, running up a gigantic credit card debt, doing all this alternative medicine. Right? Yeah. And you name it. I did so many things, acupuncture, herbs, cleanses, machines, device, I can go on and mm-hmm. on, right? Meditation. Sure, of course. Yeah. And nothing helped me. I just got worse. After five years, I agreed to have an experimental surgery because I was desperate. And I woke up from a surgery and my right arm was paralyzed at the elbow. I couldn't move it at all. And I'm like, great. My life was bad enough before, oh right? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Now I can't use my arm. So now I couldn't drive my car. Uh, I mean, I couldn't brush my teeth. It was a whole no, new level of disability. And it was wow. four months later, I met this crazy healer lady named Carrie. And long story short, she talked to me about the power of the subconscious mind. She's like, Brent, don't worry about it. You just got a lot of subconscious blocks. And she did this block clearing thing with me for an hour. And she said, okay, dear, let's fix your arm. I'm like, sure, lady, right? Go crazy, right? <laughs> Everyone else has tried. Doctors couldn't do it. Yeah. Physical therapist, Reiki healers, no one could do anything with me, right? And so she closed her eyes and went into a trance. And about a minute later, there was this loud pop in my elbow. It was like a crack, like a little firecracker went off. Mm. You know, and it was like, kaboom. I was like, whoa. And she was like, try your arm. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it really, it was a true miracle. Yeah. The, 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 this crazy healer lady had done something and mm-hmm. my arm went pop and I couldn't move it again. And so that was the miracle that hooked me into this. That's how this very much rational, skeptical, scientific, nerdy engineer sure. became a healer and a spiritual teacher. I was, I was reading about your, your information as well. And you, you've said you don't have the, the aptitude for healing or energy work. But what you've done is reverse engineered that which the greats have done. How can you walk us through the reverse engineering aspect of that? Sure. So here's what happened. After I experienced the first miracle, I was super excited to learn this, right? 
I'm like, why are you talking to me? Do you teach this? She's like, yeah, I got a training coming soon. Yeah. So I went to the training. And honestly, I expected learning healing would be easy. Why? Mm -hmm. I had gotten, you know, I was in high school, valedictorian, national merit yeah. scholar, right? <laughs> Crazy awards, achievements. I didn't just go to MIT. I crushed MIT. Yeah. I had a perfect GPA, you know, top of my class, honors, awards, right? I'm like, you know, I, I got a perfect GPA at the most difficult university on the planet, right? Yeah. How, how hard could this be? It was impossible. Mm. And here's why. I didn't understand it at first because I was so stuck in my head. To yeah, do healing work, you have to be able to feel your body. Mm. And I was oh, so deep in my mind, I couldn't do it at all. And I was frustrated and I almost ready to give up. When I realized, hey, I can't learn this like other people can, but I'm still one of the best software engineers in the world. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to go reverse engineer these people. And it took a long time. I thought okay. it would take six months. It actually took 10 years. Wow. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was going <laughs> okay. to be a lot longer than I thought. Yeah. But I went around and I found all these incredible healers, spiritual teachers, gurus, shamans, mystics, intuitives, right? Mm -hmm. And I went and I worked with them and I studied them very carefully. And little by little, I figured out what it was they were doing. And here's what I found. There's a lot of amazing people out there. There really are. Sure. They can do some pretty incredible things. But for most of them, it's something they were born with or a natural talent. Mm. Okay. They don't really understand what they're doing or how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for them to teach others to do it like they do, right? Yeah. It'd be like Michael Jordan teaching me how to dunk, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't jump four feet straight up in the air, right? <laughs> right. So I'm not sure how much help he would be to me, right? Yeah. I, I got like a two inch vertical, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I went weird. around and I started to figure out what they were doing. Yeah. And I pieced together the technology of it. And what I found was that under the surface, energy healing, prayer, law of attraction, mind power is a technology. It's just the way that it's treated and used is this very kind of airy, fairy, touchy, feely way. Mm -hmm. But under the hood, it's as technological as your cell phone or your car. It's just a matter of technology. Very interesting. I, so there's a magnetic field, of course, around every single human. Is that having to do with it as well? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. That what we're looking at is ultimately our our bodies are electromagnetic machines, mm -hmm. and we know for certain that electricity runs our muscles and our nervous system. Yeah. It's also been discovered that our DNA is magnetic. Oh, interesting. Yes, I mean, that would make sense. That would make sense. Our DNA emits a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. And so our DNA, therefore, is affected by magnetic fields. And so the energy healing is transmitted through electromag the, the electromagnetic spectrum. Fascinating. And so when we're doing healing on people, we're actually using the magnetic electrical power of the mind and the body to reprogram ourselves on a very fundamental level. How can so, you quantify, not, not quantify, but how, when it comes to, you know, the mind aspect of it. So does, how much does a person have to buy? Well, you didn't buy into it initially when the, no, the crazy, crazy healer. So there doesn't have to necessarily be a, a buy-in for the, the, my, my level of belief for this doesn't have anything to do with the electromagnetic aspect of it. Uh, just There's a little no, bit. Okay. Here's what it comes down to. If you're absolutely convinced that energy healing and all this can never do anything, it probably won't. Probably won't. Okay. That All makes sense. Need, the buy-in is just you need to believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. That's all we need. And sure. for me, oddly, that came through science. Interesting. Not yeah. through philosophy or religion. Yeah. I. It was funny. When I was 12 years old, m one of my uncles made me learn quantum physics. Oh, because okay. 12 years old. Because <laughs> you heard on the radio or something that once you're a certain age, it's much more difficult to learn. That it's like a new language. Uh, that the younger you learn it, the easier it is and the deeper you can go. And he's like, Brent, you're getting too old. You've got to learn this. And so I'm 12 years old riding down to the library at the UCI every day on my bike <laughs> to, to check out these books on quantum physics, right? Yeah. <laughs> and from that, I learned at a young age that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. That the universe is probabilistic, not deterministic. Correct. Yeah. That we never know what's going to happen. Yeah. 
And so when I went to see Terry, I was 99.9% convinced nothing would happen. But part of me knew I could be wrong. And, and that even, part of me, um, in science, oddly enough. Yeah, exactly. Which I think, you know, even you said, what is it? The Bible said, the Bible, uh, I mean, there's so many different um, uh, mystical books or, or spiritual books, but the Bible says what you, if you have a, a just a grain, like a faith the size of a mustard seed, which is smaller seed. So that's kind of like that, that small little yes. buy in of some sort, you know, that's so right. in that respect, that, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. You just need to believe it's possible. That's mm -hmm. all. That, that's all. That's the crack the universe needs to slip in a miracle. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who listen to my show right now, including myself, I mean, I, I am a psychology, that's my world. And so for me, it's interesting to hear because I've heard so many different philosophies of different things. And when it can be backed by science, I love that. I mean, obviously that's, that's the, what substantiates you and why your, 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 the formula for miracles is so different from other things is because you have the science behind it. Uh, for people listening to right now, uh, just joining us right now, I'm talking with Brett Michael Phillips, and we're talking about his book, The Formula for Miracles, where science reveals the secrets of the spirit. Brett told us about his amazing story, so make sure you go back and listen to that if you're just not tuning in. But Brett, tell us more about this book. Let's transition to it. The Formula for Miracles, once again, where science reveals the secrets of the spirit, part two. The first one is what, it's the same thing, but it's part one. Second one, um, it's actually a three-part series. Walk us through, I guess, the, the series itself real quickly, and then we'll jump sure. in specifically. So the things. first book is is really the, the, the human element. It's my story. Okay. Okay. The, where did I come from? What happened? What was the human drama? What were the major characters? So it, it's, it's very much getting to know the players and the big, big picture story. Mm -hmm. The second book is all about the science of energy, healing, and miracles. So the second book is all about how do we take the rigor and discipline of science and apply it to energy healing and mind power and prayer? Mm, right. And right. what are these laws of the universe they can explain how miracles happen mm -hmm. because here's what it comes down to. A miracle is simply a phenomena that cannot be fully explained by our current level of science and technology. Correct. Yeah. Right. So to a caveman, your cell phone would be a miracle. Mm -hmm. They can't explain it. Right. They probably think it was aliens or God or the devil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they we put that label on it. So instant healings, life-changing miracles, these are technological effects that if we understand it, we can go in and understand how it was created. Mm -hmm. It's a very similar to in, uh, we, we read in the Bible about the 10 plagues of Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the, the Hebrews were in Egypt and they were enslaved and they wanted to yeah. leave and they couldn't go, right? So that God sent a series of miracle interventions to force, to force them, force the Egyptians to let them go, right? Yeah. We had, you know, the frogs and the locust and, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Right? Flies, yeah, the what bubble. they found is there's a scientific explanation for all 10 plagues of Moses. Oh, really? Yes. Fascinating. And it started with a Thera, the super volcano at Thera exploding. And we can uh, use science, archaeology, anthropology yeah. okay. to date these I things. See that. And we know that the super volcano blew just at the perfect time. And it created this mm -hmm. whole cascade of, of downstream events. Mm -hmm. So it would cause a, a, a big uh, bloom of algae that would cause mm -hmm. the frogs to all overgrow and reproduce, mm -hmm. which then the frogs would go on land to find food and die, and then became food for that the locusts nice. that showed up. Yeah. yeah. That and, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, it's interesting. So this thing that's so perfect, miraculous that happened at the same time. That's right. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like God coming down from the heavens and doing miracles. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, no, actually, God works through nature. Yeah. That even the miracles in the Bible can be explained through science. Yeah. The reason we called them miracles was we didn't have the science to understand. Mm. So it became a miracle. Now we do. And it's the same thing. The law of attraction yeah. has science hiding underneath. Mm -hmm. And if we can connect with the real truth hiding underneath and not all this hype, right? And we've all seen the secret. We all know it's not that simple, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If it were, if making millions of dollars overnight were as simple as making a vision board, we'd all be billionaires. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know, right? Of course. Yeah, that's true. It's not that yeah. simple. Yeah. But there is real science under there. There are real effects. Mm -hmm. And that's my goal is to put it out there. I don't and I think that's a kind of What's that? Yeah, I was gonna say that because I, I was gonna say exactly because I mean, I've, I've know about you, of course, you've been on my show and, I, and I've heard about you since then, but it's, it's, this is something I think everybody should know because once again, when you marry science and and more spiritual esoteric things, it's you have visual and quantifiable 
metrics or measurements. So you can say, yes, this is attainable. These are tangible things that, that I can really see in my life, which I think is, yeah. is so important for all of us, specifically now in this time, in this time of, of living. Yeah. So with I me, mean, what, go ahead. No, go ahead. Because I was going to say with, with the book itself. So obviously this is for everybody. So um, people who are come from a, a science background, people come from a more faith-based background, spiritual background, this this definitely marries that together so people can understand both worlds, it sounds like. That's exactly right. That's the goal. We want to bring the two worlds together. Mm-hmm. What happened was about 300 years ago, Descartes basically proposed a uh, sort of a detente between science and the church. Yeah, And he I said, the physical yeah. world is science and stays over here. And doesn't mm-hmm. ask about religion or God, right? Religion stays over here, explains the spiritual world, but don't don't try to mess with science, right? Sure. And we yeah. kind of created this barrier, this wall in the middle that religion over here, science over here, never the two shall meet. That worked well for a couple hundred years, but now the wall's got to come mm-hmm. down. Sure. Because it's funny, I see it from both sides. On the side yeah. of science, what I see is fundamental physics. All of the leading researchers are discovering God. They're becoming spiritual. Mm. Because God and spirit are inherently woven into the fabric of the universe. Yeah, You can only mm. go so far with science before you must incorporate the divine, is what it comes down mm. to. And that's where we're at. We've gone about as far as we can without incorporating the divine, the nature of consciousness, and those effects. Mm-hmm. Which is really interesting, right? And so... <laughs> On the spiritual side, we're seeing the spiritual teachers like me also starting to reach out and embrace the science. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Dispenza has done a lot with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lynette McTaggart has done a lot with that. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing it from both sides. The scientists are finding spirituality and the spiritualists are finding science. Yeah. And it's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. Pretty yeah, awesome. it really is. It really, it really is awesome. The, so people reading this book, the, the three series, after learning these techniques, is that something that can be applicable? They can start to practice on their own and start to see these miracles as well? That, uh, th- those interested in the, the getting training and how to do this, it takes me about two hours to teach you how to go and train into a theta brainwave mm-hmm. and perform a healing process. That's yeah. it. It's interesting to say theta brainwave because I know, I mean, obviously for when it comes to hypnotism or some, because obviously the multiple different brainwaves, but yeah, yeah, for the theta, especially when it comes to reprogramming one's mind, you know, if you want to, uh, these in psychology this is what we teach. So when, when you're just before you fall asleep, when you're in theta brainwave state, that if you want to, when you use visualization, of course, so that allows for when you sleep. So your subconscious that works through that. So when you wake up, you've assimilated that into the platform of who you are. And all of a sudden that gets you one step closer. So obviously yours is so much more in depth than that. But that is something I know from a psychological standpoint, that's really what we teach as far as how to really change one's cognitive structure is to go into the theta brainwave state just before you fall asleep. Yeah. And the theta wave is just one of the little things I discovered. Mm-hmm. Mm. But like I said, my goal was to reverse engineer us. What are they doing, right? Yeah. So here's one piece everyone can take away right now. The, the, this was something I, I helped discover based on, there was research done at Stanford in the 60s and 70s on paranormal phenomena. They studied the remote viewing and talking to the dead and these things. And what they found, it was very interesting. All the paranormal phenomena were strongly correlated to a theta brainwave. Interesting. Which is fascinating. And what I've since wow. learned is the theta wave is like a magical key that unlocks the subconscious mind. That wow. when your brain is in a, your normal beta state, mm-hmm. the subconscious is like a bank vault. It's closed and locked. Right. There's money in there, Hmm. but you can't get to it. Yeah. When you're in the theta state, which normally happens just when we're asleep and dreaming, Mm -hmm. the the bank vault opens and we can get in. And so to consciously to to be conscious and be able to put ones in that that state of mind. Okay, I see where I see. This is why hypnotists have a variety of techniques to entrain people Mm -hmm. into the hypnotic Mm -hmm. state, which is a theta state. Yeah, correct. I have simply learned a technology. That can just do that very quickly and easily. That's all. Too so when you say technology, is that just for some people may hear technology and think, oh, I have to buy something or I need an apparatus of some sort. Is that what yeah. you mean? Or what kind of, what do you mean specifically no, with technology? There is no stuff involved here. Yeah. There's no thing you buy. There's nothing you have to carry around. By technology, I mean, it's based on laws and principles. Yes. Ultimately, yeah. it's all math at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Everything is math, right? It's yeah. trivially true. Ultimately, it's all just math. 
But no, and this is one of the things I love about these techniques is nobody can ever take this from you. You don't need a mm. machine. You don't need electricity. You don't need to be wearing white. It doesn't have to be quiet. It doesn't have to be Sunday. You don't have to sing a song or chant. None mm. of that is necessary. The, my, my first, my, my, my teachers used to say, you should be able to do this in the middle of a battle. Wow. In other words, it, even if they take you, throw you in prison, take away your money, your clothes, you no one can take this from you. Well, I am super excited to read this book and to learn this as well. Unfortunately, Brent, our time is up. We could, oh, I would literally love to talk to you all day. I know, right? <laughs> if I listen to find out more... <laughs> If my listeners want to find out more first about you and to purchase this book, The Formula for Miracles, where the science reveals the secrets of the spirit, part two, and to learn everything about you, where will they find all this information online? Uh, best thing to learn more, just hop over to my website at awakeningdynamics.com. And you'll, you'll find my website. The first thing you want to do, there's a big button that says save my seat. Click that. I've got a live Helicon webinar coming up. And on the live webinar, I'm going to walk everyone through all the seven sacred tools of higher dimensional living, as well as some interactive exercises, because I don't just want to talk to you about this. I want everyone listening to experience it for themselves. And we just can't do that in, in, in a, uh, a podcast format. Yeah. yeah. So check it out. You come to the webinar. I will inform you of how the formula for miracles works, show you how it works and give everyone a free healing for attending. So oh, I think it's I can definitely take that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, for my, my viewers and listeners uh, listening to this right now, you're going to hear this probably in the future as well, since this show will syndicate several times. So definitely go to his website as well, and I'm sure you'll see all the additional trainings uh, that he has as well. So if you don't hear it at this time and you hear it, well, you'll hear it in the, our, our future, your present. Definitely go to his website, and you'll find out all the information as well. Brent Michael Phillips, thank you so much for being a wonderful guest on my show today. I truly That's appreciate it. great to be here. This is awesome. 